Hello everyone, my name is Martha Tome and I am presenting on Guatemalan Cathedral Choir Books from Manuscripts to Digital Images to Symbolic Editorial Scores. What I am doing in this project is preserving and increasing access to a music corpus from my home country, Guatemala. Uh, this is the collection of polyphonic choir books that were used in the Guatemalan Cathedral, uh, which is a good corpus for studying the transmission of music from Europe to Latin America. And I am preserving and increasing access to this corpus by using digitization and music encoding technologies that allow us to go from manuscripts to digital images to digital scores. These scores are encoded in a machine readable file called MEI. Um, because these are machine readable files, the computer can read them and perform different actions in them. For example, automatically transcribe them into modern values which makes it accessible for modern musicians, play them back, which makes it uh, accessible to the general public, and compare it to concordant sources, which makes it also interesting for experts. So this presentation is about the technologies that allow for this process that ends with the automatic or semi-automatic transcription of menstrual sources into these scores. I tested these technologies on one of these choir books as I will present later. The focus of this presentation is on this last part, uh, moving from digital images to these machine readable scores. And I will point out at the end how we can involve students in this process, so involving them in the creation of knowledge, which at the same time can help them reinforce their knowledge in counterpoint and menstrual orientation in general, as will become clear later. So the outline for this presentation uh, is this one. First, I'm going to briefly describe the corpus and the book that I use on this project. I, I think that because there are musicologists in the audience, this will be interesting for them. And then I'm going to go into this step-by-step -step process and the technologies behind the scene. So starting with the collection, the What C collection is a collection of six polyphonic choir books that are held at the Archivo Histórico Arquidiocesano de Guatemala that is uh, next to the Metropolitan Cathedral. It's a collection uh, of manuscripts of large dimensions. Uh, they are written in choir book format and they are written in menstrual notation. They were copied in the 17th and 18th centuries, uh, but the repertoire is mostly 16th century polyphonic music. They document a continuous performance tradition of sacred choral music from the Renaissance through the 1800s. Regarding the composers, uh, most pieces uh, in this collection are by Iberian Peninsula composers, around 53% of them. So this includes both uh, composers that never set foot in the Americas and those who travel to the Americas. Uh, we have from other parts of Europe, uh, 8%. We have local composers born and trained in Guatemala or Mexico, 12% of the pieces written by them. Uh, we have some few whose uh, region of activity we don't know. A few chant pieces and most of, uh, of the pieces in the collection are anonymous. So this information is in this graphic. Uh, as you can see in yellow, we have composers from the Iberian Peninsula that never set foot in the Americas, which include the great triumvirate of Spanish polyphonist Victoria Morales and Guerrero. In green, we have composers that were active in the Viceroyalty of New Spain at some point in their lives. So either European composers that came to the Americas or composers born in the Americas. And these include uh, these three, uh, Pedro Bermúdez, Gaspar Fernández and Hernando Franco, who are among the most frequently found composers in various archives of the Mesoamerican region. And these three are actually were actually choir masters at the Cathedral of Guatemala. Bermúdez and Franco are Spanish and Fernández is a Guatemalan composer. Other uh, local composers uh, born and trained in Guatemala and Mexico are these ones in green. Uh, these two with the asterisk, Fernández and Quiroz, are the scribes involved in the choir book that I work on. Um, we have other European composers like Lazos and Palestrina. And as you can see on the bottom of the graph, we have many anonymous pieces and a few chant, a few chant pieces. So regarding the repertoire, it's a collection of sacred music. The first book is a book of masses. The second one is a book of hymns and magnificats. The third one and fifth one are of miscellaneous contents. The fourth one is a book for the Holy Week and the Salva services. And the sixth one contain 
contains an office of the dead. Um, the first four books have been inventoried. Inventory, there are four, there are inventories for the first four books, sorry. And there is a general overview of the repertoire uh, by a Guatemala musicologist, uh, Omar Morales Abril. Uh, there are microfilms uh, having images of the first three books, but as you can see on the image on on this side, uh, they are not very good quality. Some folders are cropped and others are missing. Uh, regarding transcriptions, aside from the fourth book, there are uh, transcriptions of only a few pieces. Uh, so access to this music requires a person to visit the archive where these sources are and have a special permission to consult them. So even though this is an important corpus for the reasons I mentioned before, uh, it is a very limited access. So I made a pilot project to obtain digital images and the scores for the first choir book to increase their uh, accessibility and also for helping in their, preser in their preservation. So this is the first choir book. It's a book of masses, as I mentioned before. It has 12 masses. Six of them come from a previous book uh, copied in the 17th century. And then the other six were added in the 18th century. And we have a uh, 15 polyphonic liturgical pieces that were also an 18th century addition. So now I, I will be presenting the encoding methodologies and tools used as means to increase access and discoverability for this corpus. So uh, this was a three step process. Uh, the first step is a uh, digitization which consists of photographing the folios. The second step is optical music recognition or OMR, which is similar to optical character recognition or OCR. Uh, when you have images of a text document, you use OCR to make these images machine readable. So the text is actually searchable by the computer. So uh, similarly, uh, you can do the same thing with a OMR or optical music recognition. So you have the image and you obtain a symbolic file, uh, which is a machine readable file, encoding all the symbols in that image. And basically it encodes pitch and no shape for all the symbols in each part. Uh, but we're dealing with mensural notation, so encoding the symbols, the pitch and the no shape is not enough. We need to encode uh, what are called imperfections and alterations to provide a full information regarding the no duration and to obtain a score that is properly lined up. So we need this third step that will do that. The third step actually consists of two parts, the automatic voice alignment or scoring up step that automatically assigns these nodes a perfect, imperfect or altered value and lines the nodes up and an editorial correction part because to properly line up a piece, you also need to correct any scribal errors. So this part will allow to correct these errors and encode both readings, the original and the corrected one. And this is how you get your digital scores. These are the tools behind the scene, and I am going to present each of them. Uh, so focusing on the first step, digitization, I will go uh, through this one a little bit quickly because this is not the main focus of this presentation. The main focus is on encoding technologies that follow this step. So digitization, given that these are large volumes of a special collection, the digitization requires a special equipment. Uh, you need a book scanner to digitize the books from the top, but book scanners are expensive. And uh, I couldn't find any option uh, suitable for this book and also um, not that expensive. So I made my own book scanner. So this is a DIY or do it your own book scanner. I made it with advice of from many institutions, including uh, Diam. So it is built from borrowed or built parts. So the borrowed parts include the camera, the copy stand that holds that camera and the lights. And the build part was the cradle where the book is resting, which was made out of wood by my father in Guatemala. The results, you can see here a, an image of the result a, for one of the, of the pages of the book. A, and you can compare it with the microfilm. As you can see, the folio is not cropped and the image is a, in color and it's high resolution as well. Moving into the encoding technologies, we have optical music recognition or OMR. As I said, this is what allows you, you give it the digital image and it gives you a symbolic file, which is a machine readable file that encodes all the symbols in that image. 
So uh, for this step, I use Muret, uh, which is an optical music recognition framework that supports menstrual orientation. It's developed by David Rezo at the University of Alicante. And the interface looks like this. So you have all the pages of the book and you have some uh, buttons at the top of each page, which gives you which give you access to three different interfaces to perform the OMR process. So if you click on the first one and go into this first interface uh, here, uh, you will ask the program to automatically recognize the staff regions for you. Then if you go to the second step, you will select manually uh, the regions and assign them to a particular part, a particular voice. And the third step is also automatic. You click on the staff region and ask the computer to recognize the symbols for you. And it will do that. It will recognize the nose shape and their position in the staff, so the pitch. And if there are any errors, you have a, a correction interface here on the left. And when you're happy with what you have, a, you can go back to the original interface, select the folios that you want, and export them into an MEI file. So this machine readable file. And then we will go to the next a, a step, which is the one that a, performs this automatic voice alignment so that it can read menstrual annotation, can interpret it, and encode alterations and imperfections and align the a, voices into a score. And that allows you to also enter editorial correction. So this step is done with the measuring polyphony editor, which is an online editor for menstrual annotation. The PI of the project is Karen Desmond, uh, and the developers are actually from McGill. We have Juliet Regimbal, the lead developer, and myself. I made the automatic voice alignment functionality of this. Um, and I am going to show you right now a demo of this. Uh, so let me... So this is Muret. Uh, I am going to download, this is a mass uh, called Misa de Bomba by Pedro Armules. And I am going to download one section of the Sanctus movement, which is in a uh, triple meter. So it's this one, it's the Osana section. So let me export it into MEI for the MP editor. Uh, so it's here, I'm going to save it. And now I can uh, use that file as input for the MP editor. Actually, the, this measuring polyphony editor can be used with or without OMR. So you can use it from the scratch. You can upload a manuscript in this part of the interface uh, and then enter all the notes in the piece by typing them. Or you can upload a file that already has all the notes encoded for you like the one generated by the OMR, which is the way that I'm going to use it. So I'm going to uh, use that MEI file that I generated from the OMR in Muret. I'm going to load the file. And now I can see the MISA, all the pages here. And uh, I know that my piece, the one that I was looking for, is in folio 166V, that um, Osana section of the Sanctus here. So as you can see, uh, you have all the symbols coming from the OMR. When I click on each of these, I can see all the symbols coming from the OMR. You can see them in black notation. Uh, that's the default behavior of the measuring polyphony editor. If you click on them, you will see it in the original notation. So in this case, white menstrual notation. So we have all the symbols for that Osana section for all the staves. So all good, I get you are free to input all these notes from scratch, but we don't need to do that in this case because the notes are present in the file coming from the OMR. So let's move to the next step, the score editor over here. Maybe this is a little bit small, this score editor interface. So this is what automatically lines up the piece for you. Now it's too big, <laughs> make it smaller. So you can see here the piece line up automatically for you. Uh, you can switch it to modern clefs for easy reading, or and you can bar it by the brief, for example, or the semi-brief, which is better in this case because it can show you the uh, triple meter uh, more clearly. So what I want to get here is that any changes that you do, for example, if I insert a node here or another node or a dot of division, like any change, for any change, this will automatically 
um, recalculate the durations of the notes and um, align the and automatically compute the voice alignment again for you. Um, and in the case you want to correct the scribal errors, so errors made by the scribe, not by you, you can record that, the original and the corrected reading, by moving into this editorial mode over here. And when you're happy with your corrections, you can download your file. So that's about the measuring polyphony editor. We're using it to uh, automatically line up the nodes recognized by the OMR. Uh, something that we work recently with Craig Sapp uh, from Stanford is on marking illegal dissonances to facilitate the correction of the scoring up. So this consists on a marking legal and illegal dissonances in different colors. These dissonance labels, uh, the letters that you see here, come from Home Leaves Dissonance Filter, which is developed was developed by Alex Morgan and Craig Sapp as part of the Justkin Research Project. So we made a few modifications. So the legal dissonances are shown in blue. Like for example, these passing tones, this lower neighbor, suspensions, and agent of the suspension. And the illegal dissonances are shown in orange, like these ones over here. And basically, illegal dissonances are dissonances that do not fall in any of the legal categories of the dissonance filter. Um, so to show you an example with another piece. Uh, oh. Yeah, I have another piece here that I already have downloaded. Uh, oh, it's not loading the pages yet, but okay. But we have them. So we have this over here and that's buried by, I don't know, the brief. Uh, you will be able to see that the voices do not line up at the very end. Maybe the semi brief is a little bit better. Uh, you can see that the alto is not lining up with the other voices. It's a minimum too long. So rather than going through all this and try to look for the error, we can use these dissonance labels. I can activate this filter and it will show me the dissonance labels in different colors, like I said before. Um, and I can see that the first orange label on the piece, it's uh, in here. So there's already an illegal dissonance uh, sounding at this place. And um, this is, let's switch to modern clef so that it's a little bit easier to read. This is um, because there's a scribal error in here. Um, and we can look also at the cadence. We will see that the cadence also is not lining up. So here there is a cadence in the bass and the alto. You can see that there is a cadence to the G over here. Um, and it's not lining up in the bass and the alto. The alto, the, the G is not falling where we would expect, which would be at the downbeat of the measure as it's happening in the bass. So there's definitely a scribal error already before that. And it should be before these orange labels because these are illegal dissonances that are caused by something that is happening before them. So in that case, it's this semi rave over here. Uh, that has to be cut by a minimum. So as soon as I make that change, you will see that all uh, orange labels disappear. Uh, there are a few, but they are uh, just rearticulations of notes. You can see here a rearticulation or a very short note value. These are things that we have to correct in the dissonance filter itself. Uh, but all the dissonances disappear, the illegal dissonances, I mean. Um, so everything is in blue. And you can see you could say, oh, they are not lining up at the end because this one is longer. It finishes later. Uh, that's not the case. In menstrual notation, the last note can be held for long periods. Uh, so until the director decides, basically. So I'm just going for the sake of this ending at the same time. I'm just going to shorten it to a semi brief but that's it. And I can download the MEI file. And we can do different things with that. Uh, like I said, I just want to show why I say that it's increased access. So if I downloaded that score, is this one. Uh, as you can see, you can render it in original notation. Uh, and you can also play it back. And that makes it accessible to everyone. So I'm not going to play the whole thing. Just a few measures to illustrate this.
and so on. Um, so basically, uh, these are the encoding technologies involved in, in this project. And we use the OMR uh, output to recognize symbols as input to the measuring polyphony editor. And we use the score editor, the automatic voice alignment functionality of this measuring polyphony editor and its editorial correction functionality to have a properly lined up score, which makes the, um, the music more accessible to anyone as it's a machine readable file and the machine can read it and perform different actions, like I mentioned before, playback, automatic transcription to modern values and comparison with concordance sources. Um, concordance sources, sorry. So in summary, I designed a workflow to go from manuscripts to digital images to machine readable files, encoding the menstrual music in a score format. The system allows to semi-automatically transcribe menstrual music from digital images of manuscripts in menstrual notation. Well, I applied it to a Guatemalan polyphonic choir book. This workflow can be applied to other menstrual music sources. And the students can participate and help encoding menstrual sources. So help in generating knowledge. And at the same time, uh, the tools of voice alignment and counterpoint error checking that are used uh, to generate the final product will help them will help the students reinforce their paleography and counterpoint knowledge. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hear uh, ideas about using these tools uh, in the classroom as well. Thank you very much. And thanks to all the people that were involved uh, in this project.